there. Looks, Looks like, like we, we got, got a couple, couple more games up and going. And we're going to jump in here and check out the Kipples ISP versus the Euro Emperor's Light Side Senate. Oh, looks like we might have people already broadcasting. So let's see if anybody else is broadcasting. There we go. I want to make sure we're getting everyone appropriately uh, broadcast here. Looks like it's just the two of these. I heard rumors that Sperling might broadcast this on his own channel. Uh, but maybe we'll take it from a little outside perspective as well. As you guys know, I am a CCT fan, so we'll stick with this. <clears throat> All right, so we got a little bit different uh, version of Throne Room from Sperling, and that's actually another reason I'm kind of excited to see what we got here, because he's starting Jedi business. Which means we are not going to be seeing uh, Jedi Luke's and Jedi EP, Obi Wan, things like that out of him. Uh, instead, it's going to be more the episode one Jedi, quite honest, one minus one, uh, made some new attrition conditionally, and then we get some lightsaber pulls as well. Okay, let's click there. So like Sperling is going to take a horse loss with Dark Time right off the bat, which is going to be speak with the Jedi Council, I assume that must mean he either has the JCC in his hand, or he has another copy of speak with the Jedi Council to pull it. Uh, let's see here. It looks like Gorman's going to use that one force he activated with Dark Time. To pull, he's all yours, Bounty Hunter. Sperling did get a Wisa in his opening hand, so he will grab Boss Nash Chambers. So many actions before we even activate. I need to see a couple more with some shield pulls. Alright, here we go. I wonder, we saw kind of how Gornall tried to handle the turn one attack on the audience, or sorry, we saw Worst tried to handle the turn one attack on the audience chamber. Let's see what Gornall does about the, uh, I guess it's technically turn two for throne room, but people often refer to this extra turn as turn zero. <laughs> New activation and more activation from Sperling. Very nice. Seeing an audience, we've seen more and more of these, especially ever since the MPC. Uh, I believe Hayes and Team Five kind of popularized. It was it was at the top of the minute, not necessarily just those guys, but playing seeking an audience to grab both three PO and R two D two. Rather than playing the where you looking for me, just to grab your 3PO, and I have access to both of those droids. Looks like we got Robbie stopping in to say thanks for playing. Robbie, thank you very much for hosting a great event. Seems like things have kind of gone off without a hitch, to be honest with you. All right, so, so 3PO, 3PO happens. happens. And I would imagine we will probably cycle. Going down to four cards in hand. I, I mean, this is a great start for uh, Throne Room, though. Getting your activation, getting your 3PO start cycling. I mean, you'll take that kind of trade-off of going down in life force to get 
all those icons out on the board and start getting your hand fresh. And he's really just playing all the icons, isn't he? And I believe Cornell will probably give him one more with that audience chamber. Draws up and turns the table over to Cornell. Think about maybe one more action. Looks like. I'll be real curious to see how this plays out differently from the most recent CCT throne room matchup that we saw. Uh, completely, I mean, not completely different character package, but quite a bit different as far as the main areas of focus for Sterling in his Jedi package compared to what Wars was facing down against uh, B. Kibble. So Gorman activates. Looks like we're going to find an audience chamber pulled here, hopefully. And then Boba, a gun, a movement, a despair, all the usual suspects, probably. <laughs> We have Fett. I wonder if he's uh, picked up on the draw or not tech yet. I have my face running again. Sorry about that, guys. Like, like I said, I'm still kind of getting used to doing all the streaming and stuff. <laughs> Alright, so he's going to risk it. He's going to move Boba alone and rely on that exchange. Uh, you know, a couple of tricks Sperling might have up his sleeve. I could definitely see some sense, obviously. Um, for that reason, Boron probably wants to pull his anti-sense shield right away, right when the first ability, high ability guy comes down. Um, and then I've also seen a few people starting to run Mandalorian Mishap. I've seen it more in, like, Legend. Uh, I've seen a little bit of it in Hikiko, actually. Not as much in Throner, but it's definitely something that could make its way into a deck like this, I think. Um, that obviously cancels Fed's ability to exchange for a card. 
uh, leaving him somewhat helpless at the audience chamber, relying more on that. Uh, he's like the first bounty hunter to interrupt to be able to draw a destiny on his own. Hopefully not get hopefully not get his attrition broken so that he doesn't die releasing captive. Losing captive is a big deal, for sure. So we're going to get to play this simple tricks shield. Maybe a little bit preemptive, depending on what his play is. I wonder if that's kind of telegraphing that he doesn't have anything to attack the audience chamber with. I'd be kind of surprised if that were the case, considering he's already got several 3 videos in. Um, however, you know, he does only have a six card hand. I guess it's possible that he hasn't found one of those big hitting characters yet. And really, only one big hitting character might not be enough because. But we could just cancel that battle and then come back on Sperling with the repeat. Kind of an interesting difference to note here is that. Uh, Gornal opted to keep all of the battlegrounds adjacent to each other on Tatooine rather than splitting them up with the dungeon. Um, might not be as much of a factor considering there's two other battlegrounds over on Tatooine with Mos out there as well. Uh, however, I do think that if the light side player attempts to take that audience chamber having somewhere to run where they can't just go there and get their free drains, satisfying battle plan, and things like that. Um, splitting up might be a little bit better. I'm not sure. Here we see Ray. Ray's going to get a used top hole. Ray's probably going to get a stick or someone to play with her who has a stick, I would think. There's nice. Alright. So, what, what does Gornal do here? I think stunning the leader is the move. Or projective telepathy. Projective telepathy might even be better because Sperling should weapons to display. And force loss does not occur for a projective. If you cancel the battle with it, because it's not technically excluding characters. So that would probably be the better option. I notice Gornal misplays by not playing his Senate Shield here. Uh, I think that's pretty essential. So if we get the exchange for a projective, is there a sense? There is a sense. I bet Gorlau's kicking himself. Yeah, that's, that's a tough break. That's a good opening hand. We saw two throne room versus CCTs, and we saw two pretty good opening hands for throne room. I, you know, I, I can't say that, like, that's, that's, that's lucky. Um, I mean, Throne Room plays those cards. They have access to all that kind of stuff, especially with 3D online and things like that. Um, but that's a, that's a tough break for Boba. Draws four for Weapon Destiny. And draws a five to hit Boba. <laughs> Uh, was Gornal going to be able to, he is going to, if he's all yours, Bounty Hunter, to draw Destiny at the very least. Hopefully he draws high enough to kill Ray. That would be a really tough, really tough battle if he drew a 2 or a 1 here. Going to get the shot off. 
There's the two we were talking about. Come on, let's see a little bit higher draw here for Battle Destiny. Right side is going to take a three and lay his blaster rifle. Dark side will draw the two that we feared. Oof. And he just drew his gig as well, so this is overflow. Yep, yeah, that's a pretty tough break for CCT. I think uh, we're going to be going into uh, damage control mode here before long. Oh, look at that. He does have a, a double gick. Didn't he just draw gick for weapon destiny? He did. So double gick. Interesting. I tend to view CCT as more of a Highlander deck for whatever reason. Just I, I think just because of those... Uh, Force pile pulls, you tend to not run a lot of duplicates of many cards. Gick is one that you definitely could run doubles of, though. I don't I don't think that's bad at all. Um, weapon live to grab Leia's blaster rifle. I was just wondering how he was going to get that out, actually. <laughs> he was uh, two steps ahead of me on that one. And we get the replacement. Looks like... We are going to get a solo to back up Ray and Mace. <clears throat> At this point, the audience chamber, I would say, is probably Sperling's for this game. Um, Gornall's going to have a really tough time taking that back over. Only activating 10 force. Scum cannot go online. Because, as we discussed in our last game, you may not deploy Scum and Villainy unless there is a frozen captive at the audience chamber. So he has to have Scum in his hand in order to get that online, which means all the aliens, all the independent starships are more expensive, which means 10 Force is not very much to work with. Looks like now how to pull. Maybe we are going to try and go to space. He might do that, or he might just draw a few cards this turn, trying to reestablish a little bit of stability. Hard to reestablish stability when you're getting drained for three at one of your own sites, though. So if we think back, I wonder, I mean, Gragra would have helped because Mace would not have been able to come down and initiate that battle. Uh, that's not to say another character couldn't have come down, um, but the, the beat that did happen would not have been able to happen if Gragra had been an option, I think. So... See Ellis and Woof going to space. And I bet Gornall probably draws a few. Sperling is probably going to have a reload turn here as well. <clears throat> I mean, four cards in his hand, he'll probably pay to drain. And then draw a few cards himself. Doesn't seem all that bad. All right. 
Sperling back at bat here. He is going to drain for three. Hondo, you'll be dead. And Zuckus. Zuckus is an interesting play in this deck. Zuckus is one of those cards I've seen a lot of people talking about him recently that uh um he's almost as good not in your deck as he is in your deck. Um uh, an established player that knows how to play against scum will always play around having an ability in space. So that threat of Zuckus is ever present whether he's in your deck or not. Um I do think he's a solid ship for Scum. I think he, you know, does a lot for you. I have come to find in my version of CCT he tends to be too expensive. Um especially in a situation like this where Scum's not online. I mean you're looking at a ship that has a higher deploy cost than forfeit value. Uh those stats are backwards. <laughs> Now, obviously, with Scum Online, that's that's a whole different ball game. Um, I like I said though, I've just kind of come to find that he's he's as valuable of a threat not being played in my deck as he is if I were to have him in my hand. You know? R two gonna make the Cloud City security tower a battleground. Where's Dan when we need him? I had some hot tech for him on this, too. <laughs> Toying around with CCT a whole bunch. I came to find that one of the issues was R2 going to the non-battleground and making it a battleground. Uh, one option for this is hard, shocking information, which turns off the scalp link, and R2 can no longer add the icon. Uh, the other nice thing about that is it, if your opponent is about to peek through your hand, they have to lose four force in order to do so, but they still peek. So something like Jin going lost is going to take a little bit of damage from that. Uh, obviously, very, very like narrow card in its use, uh, so it's not something that made its way into my deck, but it was definitely something that I looked at as far as a counter to this. Um, I, I have seen a lot of people doing exactly what Sperling did here and just playing the guy to the battleground to get the icon and then threaten the the potential idea of more guys coming to drain on future turns. Sperling's going to rescue. Just setting up that hand exactly the way he likes it. Got your 3PO going. Got 12 cards in there. You can ditch something you don't like. You can get everything in your hand that you need. It's kind of uh, Throne Room's own version of the Force Pile pulls, if you will. <laughs> And then, of course, you had things like Ray into the equation, who's drawing cards off the bottom of your, your force pile, and you never can't find anything. Oh, good call, Queso. First time you caught me. I got it, man. I got it. I just forgot. <laughs> All right. So, Cornell's going to drain in space. He opted not to play the shield against Sperling's drain of three on the ground um, to take a drain for free in space. I think I probably would have shielded the drain on the ground just so Sperling didn't have that opportunity to save as much force as he was able to here. Because um, he's pretty scary with a 12-card hand and what will be 24 cards active. <laughs> that that means uh, Tantive is very real. Drain 
control phase, we're getting a little reserve deck verify with Nell Hutta. Just checking to see what's in there. See what's in force pile. I would imagine Gorn will probably try and plan his turn a little bit around what he sees. You know, maybe he sees imbalance and the spy in his force pile. So he just draws and he sees if he can get the get undercover to prevent a couple of drains. Um maybe he sees a a ship in reserve, so he knows that he's got to really forfeit up, or he's got to deploy a lot of forfeit fodder up in space, so that he, if he does get attacked, he can maintain a little bit of presence up there. I think he is kind of in a damage control mode, though, like I said. Yeah, I know a couple of people have told me that Sperling's also streaming himself, so if you guys have other games you want to uh, watch, feel free to let me know. I just noticed that nobody else was in on this, so I thought it might be good to get kind of a an outside perspective on this game. Uh, it looks like Gornal is going to try to make some sort of stand at the audience chamber. Plays Proxima there. Let's see what else we get. Stunning leader is, is definitely still an option for him, so he might be able to get out of the next battle and then. Oh, he's gonna, just going to move over. There's that sense shield. All right, Gornal draws up all 17 cards in his hand. He's fishing for something. This is where a uh, Ghana Gleamort would be clutch. Being able to just plop her down at one of those sites next to the audience chamber, cancel drains by losing one force. And then suddenly you're trading drains of one for drains of one. Are we going to see the shield here? I think Gornal should shield. It's like, no. Slave one from hand. He's all yours, bounty hunter. And the final card. Is Arctic. Jin not undercover. Looks like we're going to launch an attack on Proxima here. Seems good. Padme, Luke, use pile search. Any 
any Tatooine site, not just a battleground, any Tatooine site. And 11 more force to work with. I think this is a, a gig or good game. And there's the Grim Tash to hopefully make it no gig. Well, it all goes down to eight. On kind of a side note here, I really don't like the way that Gemp does Grim Tash. It just like pulls the cards right out of your hand and you can't see you, you like have to have a really good memory to know what you what you've put back in your use pile in what order it'd be nice if it like just showed you a window of what you could what you were putting back in what order or something like that <laughs> one of my minor gripes with the awesome program that we've been blessed with i can't shake him it would be good if he only had one force, but I think that's just trying to cycle and interrupt back for Gornal. All right, let's see this attack here. Padme is going to add a destiny to attrition. Luke's going to fire away. I don't think we got a reserve deck verify, so I think these are blind draws. But Throne Room is at the point where enough of its characters are on the table that... Yeah, it, it like Wolfman says in chat, it isn't really that random, because... We see all of those characters on the table, which means all of those ones are not in the reserve deck. 3PO has been going, putting High Destiny back. I mean, he activated down to five cards left, right? Oh, I think I misunderstood what you were saying, Wolfman. You were talking about Grim Cash at being at random. And yeah, the cards are put back randomly, but by rule, you're allowed to see what is put back in what order, even though the chart cards are chosen randomly. So even though the cards are chosen randomly out of your hand, having like a little window pop up that says, this was what was chosen in what order would be kind of nice, because otherwise you have to follow as it pulls the cards out of your hand really carefully. I don't know. Like I said, it's a it's a very minor gripe. A uh, quality of life improvement for myself, if no one else. But not something that really direly needs to be addressed. Alright. The 12 battle damage is getting peeled, it looks like. Cad Bane, I can't shake him. Jasper, Mara, the Prince. Among others here. Yeah, I am dealing with a little bit of lag. I apologize, guys. Yep, and we see Mason Ray move over and Luke and Padme move over to threaten damage at two sites instead of just one. Arnold's going to drain.
feel like things have kind of slowed to a crawl here on GIMP, so bear with me a little bit, guys. Seems like the timers are just ticking, but I have a feeling both of our players are frantically hitting the refresh button. It's like the turns on going on here still. Not sure he might be just thinking or I'm hoping it's not leg issues oh here we go Dengar coming down try and mitigate a little bit I think I doubt we see a battle I bet we see him drop a few guys and pass the turn On the Baba. We have a uh, Dr. E to go along with those two. He'd be a nice addition to that squad. No escape for Dark Time. And then, of course, dark time to cause the force loss. I want to see another smuggler go down with Ponda Baba to get that attrition draw. Then maybe we can see Dengar get a couple of pot shots off. And kind of move forward from there. Not sure though. Right. So we're going to reset the smuggler's forfeit to zero instead of playing another smuggler to get the attrition draw. And then I bet he probably tries to shoot Padme. <clears throat> and I guess the site could technically clear here. There's the shot that Gornal needed. He would have liked that on Luke. All right, so Padme is down. Unfortunately, CCT doesn't draw a whole lot of destinies to hit Luke. I mean, it's got a few fives in there, but above that is tough to find. Maybe a cold feed here. Maybe that, uh, oh, nope, blaster deflection instead. Seems like a card throne room should play, right? Dr. Chelly as the battle destiny. That will clear everything. Because Han is forfeit zero from Honda Baba. Padme is forfeit zero from the shot. So Luke is going to die. Will we see a Jedi's resilience? Oh, we will for battle destiny. 
I, like I said, I feel like Gimp's listening to me or something. <laughs> Destiny and one for attrition. So everybody dies. Let's go and I'll take overflow here. Three and four. That means he's got seven. That is going to be a little bit of overflow. Well, it was a battle that worked out well for him. I think it might be a little bit too little too late. 15 life force to Sperling's 27 life force. So yeah, I know. I mean, kind of looking back on this game in hindsight, as far as things that could have gone differently, I mean, the sense was huge for, uh, oh, look at that. There is a Mandalorian mishap in there. Interesting. Huh. Um, the sense was huge for uh, Sperling early on. It does look like he was ready for CCT. Like he, he knew that this might be a deck that he would see and he knew how he was going to beat it. Um, Gornal did have that slight misplay with not playing the sense shield, but I mean the the sense still goes through even with the shield, so I don't think that would have uh, made ne necessarily been the difference maker. Um, I I do think that Gragra tech would be valuable for uh, even this version of Throne Room. It just makes it that much harder for him to attack that audience chamber, and you saw when. Gornal had to start losing stuff early. Things that he were losing were like Arctic. Um, you know, he had he had to play the projective telepathy early. So he had all of that kind of stuff. I think had he been able to use, you know, one other trick, he might have been able to save some of that stuff for a little bit later down the road, which could have led to him being able to hold the audience chamber a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys could uh, give me your thoughts in chat. I I am pretty sold on Grog Grog being good anti throne room tech. Um, we've tested her out quite a bit, and she seems to uh, hold her own. I mean, she doesn't win the game, obviously. You know, you still have to, you still have a hard fat fought battle ahead of you, but she does seem to really deter a lot of people from trying to attack the throne room right away, which means you can kind of establish a little bit more stability that we talked about. Um, Gornal does deplete life force there. Looks like Sperling takes the win by 29. So a good well-fought battle there. It's just a tough break for early on for Gornal, I think. Let's uh, see what other games we've got going on. Got Taco Bell, Chris Kelly playing, flipping side to side. They uh, just played Throne Room for Taco Bell versus Watto for Chris Kelly in the last matchup. I think uh, Taco Bell came out victorious. We got nine people in here, which means I am not going to stream this game because I don't want to overload our servers. Um, so with that said, I think I'm going to take another short break here. Uh, I believe we do have some more pods kicking off here in about a half hour, a few more games. So I will try to uh, see if I can get back on a little bit, get back on in a little bit, and maybe show you guys a little bit more. I see I'm having some unresponsive pages and stuff like that right now. So I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Um, 
and we'll see you back in about a half an hour. Until then, may the force be with you.